Thunderstone has been my favorite deck building game pretty much since I tried it a couple of years ago. It immediately sent Dominion to retirement. There was a time when it was maybe threatened, its throne was, th was threatened by Nightfall, but in the end, Thunderstone remained, uh, remained my favorite one, especially after the vast improvement in Thunderstone Advance. So I don't know why it has been so long since I played a game in the Thunderstone system. Um, I've been busy, games come out, daughters were born, we moved to a new house, the stars weren't right, the international crisis, my birthday is in two years. Just stuff happens, happens. I don't know why. I, I... Anyways, I'm back. I'm back to playing Thunderstone. And uh, significantly enough, I decided to start again from the starter set. A small box, as you can see, and three times as large as you need it, because in reality, all the, the, the this in the box fits pretty much this much of the box. You have all that you need to, to get started with Thunderstone, but nothing else. Uh, this really is starter set. It is a set that has been designed specifically to give you a taste of Thunderstone. Um, it really is pretty, pretty essential. Uh, for example, no board, no player aids, uh, just the necessary cards and the rule book. Let me show you um, the, the cards that you find in here. And also in this game, in this review, I've decided to talk about the game in general, about the basic system, which I usually do not do when I'm talking about games based on systems that I've described before, but this is a starter set. So I assume that there are viewers watching this video that have never played Thunderstorm, so I'll just cover the basics for, for them. And if you already know Thunderstorm, well, I guess that you can skip to the conclusions of my video. Here you see the setup of the game uh, in this area here. Here we have the dungeon deck with monsters that will come out and the players will try to defeat. There are always three of them in play. An area with four heroes, an area with eight village cards. Each such hero and card is actually represented by a stack. Since this is a, this is a deck building game, you will purchase cards to put in your deck. A deck of generic disease cards that players may have to add to their deck and because of certain game effects, if they trigger such game effects. And then here I have a starter deck. Each player has one such deck. So what you see here is the setup, a possible setup, but it's also almost all that is in the box. In fact, the box has one other type of hero two extra village cards and some extra some extra starter decks this is all that means that from game to game there will not be a large variety of combinations of village cards and heroes that you can have in play what you see there is well little letters that my three-year-old uses to play and um, to pretend to write words actually she already recognizes some of the letters she recognizes all of the letters it's pretty good um why am i talking about this oh yes because actually those little tiles are not there by chance i use them as uh, as uh, tokens to keep track of experience points in this game, well, you need some sort of token to keep track of experience points that the players earn by destroying monsters. Um, one of the past sets of Thunderstone came with really nice tokens that you could use for that. Uh, this one doesn't. This set only comes with cards and this way you have to add whatever it is that you want to add to, well, keep track of experience points. Each player starts with a deck containing four types of cards belonging to three categories. Regulars, which are heroes so with a blue border, and these are level zero super basic heroes. Weapons, which can be used only when equipped to a hero. And items such as the torch. Each player uses a hand of six cards. At the beginning of your turn, you need to choose what to do for that turn, when it is your turn. Um, and you can do one and one only of several things. Let's start from the easy ones. You can choose to take a card out of your hand of six and to remove it 
forever from the game. You don't put it in the discard pile, it is just removed. Because this is a deck building game, everything that you get from the table goes in your discard pile first. When your deck is exhausted, you reshuffle the discard pile, you make a new deck, and this is how the cards that you purchase or you earn in whatever way will go back into your hand. If there are cards that you do not want because you want to make your deck as effective as possible, you can spend a turn simply to get rid of a card. Or you can prepare. That is, you can choose any number of cards from your hand and you put them back face down on top of your deck, which simply ensures that they will come back to your hand next turn. Why so? Because there are cases in which you almost have the combination that you wanted. You are almost able to do uh, something that you have been trying to do for a while. Without that rule, then you have that hand, which is almost great, but actually useless. You discard it, and maybe next time you'll get another hand, which is almost great, but in reality, in actuality, by itself, useless and so on and so forth, which can be frustrating. If you have the option to prepare, you're spending a full turn, but you are getting better chances of getting uh, the cards that are good, because you know that they are there, because you put them there, uh, combined with the cards that you were still looking for. I really like this option, and if it is used well, it can do, well, a lot for you. Let's have a look at some of the cards now. Cards may have a coin value, that is the amount of gold that the card generates. Weapons have a weight, and not every hero can carry every weapon. Heroes have a similar number there, which indicates the strength of the hero. And you can equip uh, to a hero only a weapon that has a strength that is equal to or lower than the strength that the hero can carry. So actually this um, regular can use a long spear, because the, the weight is 3, he can equip up to 3. Items may have a light factor, a number printed here, which indicates the amount of light points that they generate when they're used in the dungeon. Cards have a cost here, that's the amount of gold that you need to pay to purchase that card. And cards also may have effects clearly explained in the card itself. Some effects are dungeon effects, they apply when you choose to visit the dungeon. Some are village effects, they apply when you visit this area here, which will have eight green decks, as I showed you earlier. I just decided not to fit them in here so you could see the cards better. Uh, or cards may have a spoils effect, that is an effect that applies if you win a fight against a, mon against a monster in the dungeon. There are also other types of effect, but these are the main ones. So during your turn, you can get rid of a card for good, you can prepare your deck for next turn, or you can go to the village. When you go to the village, you can spend the money generated by your cards, the ones currently in your hand, you can spend those to purchase one card, one and one only. You can purchase items, you can purchase heroes, which also have you know, cost, uh, strength factor, they may have other stuff, they may generate gold, they may generate light, and certainly most of them, I believe, uh, pretty much all of them, have some abilities such as an attack factor, maybe a physical attack, a magic attack, other abilities. Heroes are uh, divided in three levels. You see, this is a level one hero. If you go through the stack, you will see that then there are level two heroes and at the bottom level three heroes. You can always purchase the hero that is on top of the deck, of the hero deck, for the amount of money that that, that that hero costs. You can purchase this guy for six coins, for six gold. Uh, however, there's also another way of getting heroes, which is by spending experience points that you need to provide tokens for to keep track of those. I'll explain later how you get those experience points, but when you go to the village, when you choose the option of going to the village, you can also level up your heroes. That is, suppose that I have this guy in my hand, and I have two experience points. This value here is the number of experience points that you need to spend to level up that hero. I have that card, I have this card, I have two experience points, I spend those tokens, 
I get rid of this guy, it is destroyed, and I go through the deck, and I get a level 2 hero, which I add to my discard pile. Effectively, it is the same person, which has just become better. And you also have a cost to level up from level 2 to level 3, which is the maximum level. Also, when you go to the village, you may have cards in your hand that have a village effect, and that can be used, well, in the village. For example, this guy can destroy a disease to draw a card. You may have diseases in your hand, which are bad cards that you have to add to your deck. If certain game effects are triggered, well, having a cleric, uh, yeah, it's a good idea uh, if you, well, if you have a lot of diseases in your deck. The other thing that you can do is to go to the dungeon to fight these horrible monsters. Uh, always two of them are available, and you must imagine this, uh, this group of three cards representing three levels of the dungeon. Level 1, level 2, level 3. The higher the level, my shot right here means the deeper the level, level 1 is almost at the surface, level 3 is very deep. The deeper the level, the darker it is down there. So you must imagine this monster being in a darkness level 1, darkness level 2, darkness level 3. Why would you go to the dungeon? To destroy monsters, of course. Monsters may have uh, values here, which uh, you can use if you defeat the monster. When you defeat a monster, it is added to your deck. So for example, if I defeat this monster, well, first I gain this amount of experience points, which is great. Then I put it in my discard pile, when it comes back to me in my hand, this monster generates a, a gold. Also, monsters may have the trophy trait, that means that you gain that ability if you add this card to your deck. So when this card comes back to my hand, I also can add strength plus two to one hero, which is quite sweet. But to defeat a hero, you need to uh, produce enough attack points to, meet, to match or to meet or exceed that number. This monster has four health points. I need to inflate four wounds. For example, suppose that I have this guy who has a physical attack of plus one and he's equipped with this weapon. It has a physical attack of plus three. Now I have an attack of four. The health points here are four. Technically, I have enough to destroy the monster. But remember how dark it is here. You need to provide enough light to see your enemy. That means that uh, to destroy this enemy, not only do I need to have four attack points, I also need to have at least one light point. I suppose that my hand is... Where are the torches? is such with some other useless stuff thrown in i have a point of light attack of four i can just go to the dungeon and attack that monster and i defeat it monsters may also have abilities that apply during the battle that means you declare an attack against the monster you apply the battle effect and then you count your attack points after the battle effect. You need to be able to have enough attack points after you have paid the penalty, whatever that may be. As I said, you need light to go down the dungeon. You can also be brave and go without, but for each light point that you do not generate, or for each darkness point that you do not use a light point to cancel, you have a penalty of minus two. That means, actually, you could attack this monster if you without any light, if you produce a strength of 6. 4 minus 2 for the 1 point of light penalty that you are not, uh, you're not paying. This guy, I don't have any light, I need to produce 10. 6 is level 2, 2 points of penalty for each darkness point not covered by a light point. Stem. And this is pretty much how it works. When a monster is destroyed, it is added to the discard pile of the hero that slaughtered that monster. You slide at the monsters and you refill the dungeon. Game is over when the big boss of the game, who, which is one of the uh, bottom 11 cards of the deck, is revealed and defeated, or when it reaches the top of the dungeon. 
At that point, players go through their deck and they look for cards with the symbol here, that is the amount of victory points that the card generates. Monsters generate these, having a hero of level 3 also give you victory points, all hero of level 3 give you victory points. And after victory points have been tallied, well, guess who's the winner? The one with the most victory points. You see a game in stores, or you see it online, and your first question is, should I buy it? Unless you are a Thunderstone player and an acolyte of the Cult of Completeness, in which case you're probably not watching this review because you've already purchased the game. Uh, or you purchase it and you're watching the review hoping that I say that you should buy it so that you don't feel guilty for the money you already spent or you're going to spend. I understand you perfectly. It's not like I've never done that. But suppose that you really had the question that you're not sure whether to buy it or not. Well, um, where, why should you buy it? If you have never played Thunderstone, you don't want to invest too much money to buy a larger set, a larger standalone uh, expansion of the old Thunderstone or well, the, 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 the basic game of the second generation of Thunderstone, Thunderstone Advance, you don't want to invest in that. Here you have a game that costs less money, has less stuff, but it has all that you need to get started. That is the biggest plus of this, of this set. The biggest limitation is that you have all that you need to start and absolutely nothing else. Um, you do not have many of the options that you find in Thunderstone Advance. For example, there's a type of card there which is called the Familiar, uh, which is really fun stuff to have. You don't have it here. Uh, in Thunderstone Advance, you have a beautiful, beautiful board that you can use to organize your cards. So not necessary, but useful. Um, you just have a lot more stuff there, which of course is also more expensive. But my point is that also with Thunderstone Advance, you have a more replay value because you do not have just a very small number of cards. You can combine things around and you may play it for longer than you may play Thunderstone starter set before the game gets stale and you really need a new expansion. Uh, this one, really after you've just played a couple of times, uh, you will want to buy more stuff, which is perfectly reasonable. I'm just saying that if your first concern to start with was not to spend too much money, uh, then, well, after you, you got hooked, of course you will have to start buying more stuff. Uh, Thunderstone Advance may be a better investment if you want to start playing Thunderstone, because yes, you spend more to start with, but uh, you just get, I think, proportionally more. I think it is a better investment. Um, characters, monsters that you find here, they're all, they're mostly nice and good and fun to use. Some heroes are much better than others, so some village cards are much better than others, so you will uh, tend to buy those, which also kind of reduces the, the, the replay value of the game. You only have enough monster cards to create a single dungeon, so that is another thing that definitely limits replay value. The dungeon will always be the same, with the same monsters, in different order of course, but still, uh, with other sets, uh, you do not use all of the monsters every game, so the game stays fresh for longer. So my recommendation in conclusion is, if you really don't have any way of getting to try uh, Thunderstone from a friend, from your friendly local game store, and you want to get a sense of the game, then Thunderstone, such as said, by all means, is a perfectly valid solution, is a perfectly valid response to that. However, my main recommendation would be to try Thunderstone from a friend or from your local store if you have never tried the game and you're wondering whether or not you would like to, uh, to, 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 whether or not you think you may like the game. And if you like the game, I would suggest starting from Thunderstone Advance. Then, after that, you may consider adding the cards in this set as an expansion that is not too expensive. Uh, but I just don't see this as a great entry point to the system. A valid one, but Thunderstone Advance is much better. You get much more stuff and much more game for the money.